I'm going to play yard sale. Then we're going to be getting the king of the tri-state honky-tonks on the air with us. Here's yard sale. sign says yard sale the real estate sign says sold the family picnic table holds all that it can hold ain't it funny how a broken home can bring the prices down in the grass and on the sidewalk there must be the whole town And they're sorting through What's left of you and me Paying yard sale prices For each golden memory Oh, I wonder what you'd say If you could see What's left of you and me You left two summer dresses In the backyard Just brought them to me She said I think They'll fit just fine There goes The baby's wagon And a mirror From the hall Better take Just one more look Before they take it all They're sorting through What's left of you and me What's left of you and me? Oh, I wonder what you'd say if you could see How they're sorting through what's left of you and me Oh, isn't that great? I'm, uh, well, at least 99% sure that was Rhonda Vincent on there uh, with Bobby on yard sale. We're going to find out. We're going to be calling the king of the tri-state honky-tonkers up uh, this morning. Let's see if I can get him on the line. We'll ask him when we get him dialed up here this morning. <phone rings> calling Bobby Mackey in Wilder, Kentucky this morning. Good morning. Hey, pal, how you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Was that Rhonda Vincent? It was, wasn't it? I was right. Yeah, yeah, Rhonda Vincent singing with me on that. You know, you, you've got a better copy. Now, you, you did this before Kershaw got it. Dennis Hensley found the song. Uh, a couple boys from Indianapolis, Indiana wrote it, and Dennis got his hands on it, and, and he, was, he was really big on the song, and, and he got it to me, and we just didn't pull the trigger fast enough, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, you got a great version in that, and, and here we are on a Thursday, November the 2nd, 2023, and you've got some big news to tell everybody there. I've been kind of giving them a teaser about it here for the last several weeks now. Yeah, you know how hard it is to keep a gag order on you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be pretty tough. <laughs> uh, this is big news though it's something out of the ordinary that it doesn't happen every day i'm gonna give you the air and let you tell the folks what we're talking about yeah it's time to let the cat out of the bag ain't it yeah i think so i've been been working on this for i don't know three months or so and you know the old honky-tonk you know i've been there 45 years and you know the, the old honky-tonk wore out but i ain't yet <laughs> and, uh, so, so been hunting for a place to, to lease, a place I could move to. Every time I'd find get a lead on a place, it would fall through. 
Yeah. And uh, something come up all of a sudden, and we put it together within a week. And uh, it's all said and done. And going to tear the old honky tonk down. Going to get the bulldozer out. Yeah. Uh, going to build a new one there. But I found a place to play over in Florence. It's about 20 minutes away from the club. Yeah. November the 25th, coming up, it's going to be our last Saturday night at the at the old place. And Friday, December the first, the following week, we'll be opening up in temporary Bobby Mackey's in, in Florence, Kentucky, 20 minutes away. And you know, I was uh, I was sweating bullets. I know you weren't worried. You don't worry about nothing. I've noticed that about you in these years I've known you. But I was worried because you'd tell me about a place, and then uh, I told Sharon. I said, "Man, it's tough to run a place because you looked at several different places." But you told me something, and them old hippies in California used to say that. Oh, don't worry about it. When everything uh, falls in place, it'll all be all right. Well, you were right, and I guess them old hippies were right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, Denise, Denise and I were beating our head against the wall, you know. Yeah, and and we were looking, you know, real intently, and and, uh, and everything just d- didn't come together. So we just decided, well, we'll just we'll just back off and let it come to us, and, and it that, did. That's what happened. And you know, uh, you've been there forty five years, but that building has been there since back in the twenties. Am I accurate about that? Yeah, it's been there. For, it's over a hundred years old. Yeah. Absolutely, and uh, the 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 site was originally a slaughterhouse. Yeah, and that's right. And uh, in the late eighteen hundreds, it was a slaughterhouse. Then they built a a roadside tavern there. Just the, the original part of it was a it was a roadside tavern called the Bluegrass Inn. Yeah, women wasn't allowed in. Just just uh, just men disguising yeah. it. Yeah, they'd, they'd spit the back of juice and stuff. You know. Well, I wouldn't even want to go in a place where women weren't allowed. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of depressing. Yeah, yeah a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want you to tell us about the brand new building, about the specs of it, and what what you have decided to do. It's going to be on the original site. You're going to protect the well. That's where all of the spirits, the haunts, and the ghosts and everything at at Bobby Mackey's place live. There. Tell them about the new the new construction yeah. building. Yeah, the uh, the well. Is, there's a book written about it. It's called Hell's Gate, and that this refers to the well. Uh-huh. But the well originally was it drank the blood from the slaughterhouse. Wow. That's what the well was doing there. Yeah. And it uh, there's a railroad track, you know, runs behind the club and, and then the Licking River. They tunneled under the railroad track from the basement of the well, what well, the it was when it was a slaughterhouse, it was just a little barn I think there. And they dug a tunnel down in under the railroad track and into the Licking River. Of course, you know the way it all come come about with the with the hauntings and stuff. I was there ten years before that. Any rumors come out about the hauntings, and then then uh, Doug Hensley wrote a book about it. Right. The book's available on Amazon and stuff. It's called Hell's Gate. Anyway, I didn't want it to get out when I first heard about it. I told everybody to keep quiet about it. I didn't want anybody to know. <laughs> what was my stupid? <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, I've seen tour buses park. And line up out there and unload and to uh, uh, to do tours of the thing and and it's it's become now Bobby Mackey folks has consistently said he said H D I'm I'm here about the music uh, you know the other uh, the other uh, you know we we allow the tours and and of course it's it's great publicity uh, but Bobby's there for the music and uh, that that's where that's where he is and always has been now back before. You bought that place. Uh, you were a brakeman with the railroad, and you actually were probably on a train that went right behind that building at 44 Leaking Pike, didn't you? Not on a train, but on the uh, the railroad bus that run from Covington to right. Silver Grove. Right. To uh, it was a railroad bus, and all railroaders could ride the CNO bus free back and forth from the the train yards to the crew dispatcher's office, where they yeah. the home office there. But uh, I used to ride the bus right by there. Uh, It'd be all lit up, and at that point, they'd busted up the gambling, and they had bingo going on. Yeah. And there'd be cars parked everywhere and all lit up and everything. <laughs> I, you know, I'd go by there, and, I, you know, I, I, could, I would visualize what, what the place looked like inside. Yeah. I could almost see it, you know. Yeah. And uh, anyway, that happened a lot, and later when I got laid off on the railroad and got into music full-time and then uh, played some nightclubs uh, back of Cincinnati. Over a period of eight years, I was at three different nightclubs. And every time I'd leave one, go to the other, would well, empty the other one out. The one that just left would everybody would follow me from there. So after I was at the third place, I thought, you know, I should be doing this for myself. So anyway, some some friends from Northern Kentucky kept coming over to the clubs where I played, and they they'd been telling me, you need to get a place over in Northern Kentucky. 
Yeah. There ain't nothing over there. You need a place over there. And anyway, it, it come together sooner or later. Looked at the, the old uh, Latin quarters, what it was called. It was a gambling casino. Right. Put the, put the story together after talking about the roadside tavern, which was a bluegrass inn, and then they built onto that, and it, and it became a, a real fancy gambling casino in the in about the 30s. A lot of history yeah. there in that building. A lot of history. Yeah, a lot of history. But it's been closed. They closed it up. When when I'd go by there with it all lit up, they were having bingo, and then they finally busted that up and sent sent a bunch of people to jail. Yeah, the place has been sitting there empty. They they shut it down about 1965, I think. Right. That's when they shut the bingo down, and pretty much, pretty much it sat there empty from 65 to 78 when I got it. And for and the, 45 years, you've been playing genuine country music, and uh, of course, folks, Bobby Mackey. At the Josie Awards a couple of Sunday nights ago, they inducted him into the Independent Artist Country Music Hall of Fame. And uh, yeah. it's quite an honor. I want you to tell the folks about the new building that you're going to construct there. Okay, we're taking the old building down. There's a basement under it. Yeah. And, and the, the place where, where we play, where the, where the club is, it's up in the air. It's up level with the highway. But, but right. you know, the, the ground goes down. I'm going to level that off and, and make a one-story plan. Not sure yet if it's going to be a a pole building or a metal building. Uh, right. It, we're toying with that. But when we take, when we go down to the ground and level it off, the, the well's going to be there. Right. Uh, and so I'm going to leave it exposed, pour the concrete around it, and put some lights down in it. And, and, right. Uh, right. Put a, put a glass over it, a railing around it, where everybody can see it. Right now, uh, people go on tours on, on Friday and Saturday nights. And of course, uh, other times of the week too it's right. available but on friday and saturday we give the many tours people people want to go to the basement and see it it's going to be right there where everybody can see it new place built are they giving you any kind of estimation on the time period that it takes to do all of that well it's, it's it'd be kind of hard because you know we're going to going to do it and be kind of hard to figure it out you, in you the winter months, yeah yeah and it's going to be winter so probably not going to do anything of this as far as tearing it down until after the first year, but we got to make those plans as we go. But right now we got so many tours, but people come from everywhere to uh, summer tours yeah, and some are, some are overnight investigations and people come from everywhere. They sure do. They sure to do. To come there, at, they'll, you know, they rent a place for the night and investigate. And all these people, they bring in all kinds of equipment. I set it up. I didn't know what to call that, but I can't remember now. They set up, equipment that tells when their spirits active in a place and stuff yeah they, there's a lot of technology in that and i won't go into detail but I, <laughs> i've seen some strange things take place especially one morning while i was on the air there and i'm going to miss the old building i asked bobby Mackey folks the other day i said well what is going to be the last song you do at the old building and he said i'm going to do the same song i did which was the very first song i ever sang on stage at my place and a webb pierce number called i ain't never and on november the 25th that's what you're going to shut it down with right yeah actually uh, webb pierce had the big hit on it back years ago but mel tillis wrote it and he had a right he did a, he did a version of it back in the sometime the same 70s, I think. September the 8th, 1978. That's the first song I sang on stage. And it'll be there. the last when you do November the 25th. And then when you get the new building up, I know that's going to be the very first song you do from the stage of America's new honky tonk. Yeah, just, just got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, <Okay. laughs> but me and Ernie, Ernie Vaughn, a bass, a bass player, been with me so many years. Every time I do it, I'll say this is the first song we sang on the stage. And of course, Ernie was with me. Yeah. First song we did on the stage in 1978, and uh, and I asked Ernie if he remembers what the second one was. <laughs> <laughs> Does he remember? Because I don't know. <laughs> you don't remember the no. second one, yeah. Well, no, we got uh, no clue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you you have been there all of these years, 45 years. You've been there, and the yeah. uh, the legend uh, goes on. Do you have a new miracle for the new place that you're going to be in Florence, Kentucky over there? A number, uh, address for the folks to where they can jot it down in their phone. It used to be a place called Mugby's, and it uh, was a popular place in that area Right. Uh, some years ago. It's at 8405 U.S. 42. U.S. 42, okay. In Florence. In Florence, Kentucky. People come to your club. They have for years now from foreign countries, and you've had everybody in country music at your club. Merle Haggard, George Jones, uh, the list is too extensive to go into. Yeah. But, but it's Vern Godston. Oh, yeah, Vern Godston. And, Gene uh, Watson. Gene Watson, and and uh, so it's it's been a it's been a staple in and one 
people mention Wilder, Kentucky, then your name automatically is associated on all of the TV crews, folks. Anytime Bobby does a press release, and you're going to see this, they come from all over, mainly Cincinnati, Ohio area. Uh, but they're going to be there when they tear that building down, the news crews uh, with their trucks, they're going to be there. And, of course, when they start constructing it and the grand opening, they're going to have a news crew there then because 700 WLW radio and, and, and television, and there's several different TV stations there in the Cincinnati area. When, when something comes up about country music, then they, they refer a call, and usually they'll have Bobby at the studio or they'll come to where he's at to get his opinion on something. So it's been a, it's been a staple for country music, and Bobby is their go-to guy for anything that involves country music in that area. Yeah, we've we've jumped a gun on the announcement today. Well, not really, but our press release is going out next Tuesday, and that's when the the local media will will find out, and when the, when the whole Greater Cincinnati area will find out what's going on. And I I look for a lot of calls on that. You're gonna have a lot of artifacts, like the things in the green room. People uh, like Claude Gray and a lot of other people have signed that uh, board in the green yeah. room and you're going to have so many artifacts and of course you're going to have a green room you're going to have a place at the new place or the bull arena we will ride yeah in the new place but then temp- the temporary place we won't we won't have the mechanical bull there but we'll have we'll for sure have a corral in the, in the new place for the mechanical bull because i got the mechanical bull when before the urban cowboy movie came out right uh, back in 80 and uh had, had the mechanical bull and Everybody used to ask me, how, how long do you think that bull will last? You, you know, how long do you think that'll, yeah. that'll last? Everybody riding one after another. Yeah. I said, well, I, you know, probably be like a pool table. As long as the pool table <laughs> sat there, somebody's going to shoot pool. That, that's right. That's right. And I was exactly right because they still ride it today. It, it, yeah. You know. Yeah. These people today riding it, never. most of them never heard of Urban Cowboy movie. <laughs> they love it. They love it. And, of course, you're going to have a, a big old dance floor. And yeah. uh, it's, it's just going to be a, a great thing happening. And, and uh, all of you folks listening to me, no matter where you are, I've got listeners this morning that checked in from, well, let's see, uh, Charlotte and Lance Rickner, they've been to your place. Uh, Bob and yes. Sue and La Plata, Maryland, Twice. friends of mine, and a lot of other people scattered around all over the country. You've got a lot of friends in Texas and a lot of listeners down there. And so we want to invite everybody. We'll we'll uh, stay in touch with Bobby throughout this process and come to 8405 U.S. 42 Highway in Florence, Kentucky. And uh, December the 1st, Bobby's going to be in there. And when they get the grand opening, uh, then there's going to be all kind of people there. So make plans, and we'll keep you abreast of the uh, construction whenever they start all of that. And it's just going to be a great time. I want you to tell me about America's Honky Tonk. I've got it queued up next to play by you. I wrote it, I think, I don't know, it might have been about the 40th anniversary year when I wrote that. Right. Uh, it come together real quick. It's just a little, just a little, little ditty about George Jones playing there and stuff. But, you know, it's, it's been, it's been a great ride, you know, and it's going to be bittersweet. I, I hate to, I hate to leave the place, hate to see it go. Yeah. But, you know, it's just one of those things that, uh, on with the new and got to move on and, yeah. and, uh, I but, you. I'm, I, but I'm so grateful for the 45 years that it's given me and, uh, we're ready to move on and we're having some, a new t-shirt made up with a picture of the old club and, yeah, and with the the date of opening, we got to putting a date on it that we're <laughs> yeah, yeah. Close, the last night will be uh, right November the twenty fifth on a Saturday night. When right, will be our last night. Right, you know it's bittersweet, but it's on to the new, and we don't look back. We're just that's, going that's ahead. That's right. That's right. And the new building is going to be it's going to be great. And they've got a big old parking lot for all of you people that that listen to me and you hear me talking about America's honky tonk. We've done live radio shows up there by the Kazulians. I don't remember how many. Several, have, several but. of them. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, that's always a lot of fun. It's always a lot of fun, and there, there's never any trouble. Seriously, uh, I like to carry on about a lot of things, but I'll be serious about this. I've never seen an issue. There's never any trouble in the the city of Wilder, Kentucky. Valerie Jones, she thought so much of Bobby Mackey. Uh, she and her husband, Tom, they flew down to Houston, and they were on stage and, uh, and awarded Bobby and Anita their awards down there at the CMA of Texas. And so uh, Valerie Jones, what a great mayor for the city of Wilder, Kentucky. It's great to have Valerie and Tom out there, and, and she was on stage when Anita and I got the Duet of the Year award, and uh, and that was the night that, that Penny Gilly announced that I was going to be a regular on her show. Absolutely. This coming year. Yeah, that's going to be, uh, they, they filmed that thing in February, I think, right? Yeah, we'll be going out to Fort Worth at Little Red's Longhorn Saloon on February 5th and 6th, I think. We'll be filming a year's worth of shows. 
a couple of weeks ago when we were at the Josie. You bought it down in Texas, didn't you? I bought it in, in Houston. You hauled it to yeah. Nashville yeah. <laughs> for me. <laughs> when we, when we, we we drove down from Nashville, yeah. I didn't want to bring it on the plane. It, I didn't have a case for it, and I carried it around while I met the whole, the whole time I was out in Houston. Uh, Sharon told yeah, me, but, she said, what we ought to take and get some string and just set it up on top of the car and kind of look yeah. and tie it. And I said, no, we can't do that. Yeah. She said, if we could find an old guitar, we'd bust it all up. And, and she had all kind of plans. She's going to send you pictures of it. That would have been, been fun. Uh, but you stated that the guitar really played well. You like that thing, don't you? Yeah, well, here we was out in Houston. I didn't have a guitar. Yeah, and, uh, you know, and uh, Anita and I were going to do the our duet on on stage at the at the show, and uh, right. of course, uh, thanks to Mary Mentor for setting us all up for that. And uh, but I didn't have a guitar, so uh, we called a music store out there, and I was going to rent one. Yeah, and uh, and that didn't sound too good, and so I thought, well, let's wonder where there's a pawn shop. And we run across one. I went in a pawn shop, looked around for, at some guitars, and had a the only the only guitar in the place that was worth a nickel was a, a, a Taylor guitar. A Taylor. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, of course the strings were dead. They were rusted. And it, it didn't <laughs> sound good, but I, but I knew it could with a new set of strings. So I bought the guitar and they threw in a set of strings. And me and my son-in-law, Denny, went, went back to the motel and we put new strings on the thing. I couldn't believe how good it sounded. Oh, yeah. And uh, I would, they told me they'd give me 60% back if I brought it back to yeah. the pawn shop. They'd give me 60% of the money back and, and yeah. they'd take it back. <laughs> and and I, I was considering that, and I thought, no, they ain't getting it. I'm keeping it. You're going to keep it. <laughs> so I had you I had you to haul it to Nashville for me because we yeah. were going to be up there. We did. When was it? We were in, uh, in, in Houston, what, Tuesday and Wednesday? Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is when I was there. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, then but you drove down there, and, you know, we flew down, so I had you to haul it because we were meeting meeting in Nashville the following. It worked out uh, just Monday. right. It worked out just right. It worked right. out just right, and it would have been funny if you had an old beat up guitar <laughs> we, <laughs> come haul it back to me. I told Sharon we stayed on our ride to Nashville, and we're going to be backstage with Lisa Lane at the uh, Gene Watson show. She's going to do that big Christmas song that she had out. Uh, December the 8th, but we always stay uh, outside of Nashville, and then we go on to the Holiday Inn Express where all of us stayed there when we were there for Josie. But uh, she said, you better get that guitar out of there. I said, well, absolutely. It's going in the room. <laughs> Didn't want to chance somebody seeing it and bust a window, you know. But, but talking, uh, about get, talking about guitars, when I was out at Fort Worth this year, back in February, taping one of uh, Penny Gilly's shows, uh, uh, Jeannie Max Lane let me borrow one of jerry max lane's martin yes. guitars yes. for that i didn't have, didn't have to take one with me she let me yeah. borrow that it was yeah it was not an honor to play that on the on penny's show but gonna be on on all of our shows next year and we've got to get all the songs together all at one time because we're, we're going to be filming all the shows in two days yeah in february yeah. and uh anyway looking forward to that We'll be looking forward to seeing you out there at Little Red's Longhorn Saloon at 741 in the morning, and I've got America's Honky Tonk queued up and ready to go, Bobby, and I appreciate the camaraderie and, and uh, appreciate what you've done for country music through all these years. You've kept it country. Man, I appreciate you, too, and you've, you've won some nice awards in the past few weeks, too. So anyway, I appreciate you very much, You what you do for all us independents and, and uh Man, you know we we just you know you know we got to like you keep saying we we're bringing country music back one song at a time, one song at a time. All right, Bobby Mackey, love you, man. Love you too, pal. And you look after Thanks. yourself. All right, buddy. All uh, right, bye bye. Uh, that's Bobby Mackey, one of the greats that he's had there, Claude Gray. We uh, had him there several times. Justin Trevino. Oh Lord, like I said, the list is too extensive to go through. That came to America's honky tonk. America's honky tonk, country music that we grew up on, where you'll always hear a George Jones song, he even sang here in his day. It's America's honky tonk, where the good times go on and on, dance to your favorite song or sing along. Place where some things never change The world has changed a lot 
in these 40 years But the more things change, the more we stay the same Some say the place is haunted Well, who knows, it just might be If it's true, I hope our music is their thing It's America's honky town Country music that we grew up on Where you'll always hear a George Jones song He even sang here in his day It's America's honky town Where the good times go on and on Dance to your favorite song or sing along Place where some things never change